Almost every American occasion involves apples. American pie on the 4th of July. Apple cider in the fall. It's a fruit that pairs well with almost anything. It's a global staple and first made its appearance in the 1600s when they made their voyage from England to Boston. If you grew up in the Midwest specifically, you may have been led to believe that one man, aptly named Johnny Appleseed, was the harbinger of such delights as apple butter and apple sauce. But you might be surprised to learn that that clean-cut pioneer visage strays quite far from the true life and identity of Johnny Appleseed. Although Johnny Appleseed was in fact a real person, he was actually named John Chapman. He was born in Lemster, Massachusetts on September 26, 1774, two years before the nation's declaration of independence. His mother died when he was very young, and his father fought in the American Revolutionary War. During the formative years of his life, Chapman grew deeply religious, and his dream became to make sure no one would go hungry. He planned to do this by planting as many apple trees as he could. Chapman planted his first orchard in the Allegheny Valley in Pennsylvania around 1798 when he was 18 years old. He started his journey westward from Massachusetts accompanied by his 11-year-old half-brother, Nathaniel. But by his early 20s, he was alone in his mission, a lifestyle that served him well enough for the rest of his life. But Johnny wasn't the enchanting, clean-shaven, jovial wanderer letting the whims of his heart and good intentions direct his path across the Midwest. He was industrious and calculating. Starting in 1792, the Ohio Company of Associates offered 100 acres of land if settlers could prove they would make it their permanent homesteads. Settlers were required to plant 50 apple trees and 20 peach trees on their land in the first three years of living there. Chapman was committed to helping out with the great task at hand. It would take him almost 50 years to accomplish his goal of planting thousands of productive apple trees. He traveled through the Ohio Valley, then Indiana. Somehow, he was able to estimate where immigrants from the east would travel through as they ventured west. He was well liked and welcomed in all the little towns and settlements that he'd passed through. He would bring news to people from around the country and would tell children entertaining tales from his travels. He was also very devout, and it's said that his favorite book was the Bible. But he was called funny looking because of the way he dressed. He would trade his produce for second hand clothing as his work would make maintaining luxurious garments a futile effort. He was thought to be of medium height, blue eyes, with wiry light brown hair, and a beard. He was a quintessential outdoorsman. Legend states that he would rarely wear shoes, even in the winter. It's said that his feet were so thick and callous that he could walk barefoot on the snow and ice, and even a rattlesnake couldn't bite through them. He would often sleep out in the elements with only a small campfire to keep him warm at night. The seeds for his endeavor came from cider mills that he did business with along the way. These apples were not the varieties that we're used to eating today in desserts and baking, but the unpleasant tasting apples used to make a great hard cider. Hard cider was an alcoholic beverage that was a staple of the American diet, and the apples also served as a safer alternative to unsanitary local drinking water. Thanks to Chapman, we now have a delicious homegrown variety of apples which stems from settlers experimenting with these ungrafted crimson gifts. In school, you may have seen Johnny Appleseed depicted as haphazardly planting an apple seed along his path and roadways out in the open, but historians believe he was very meticulous with his crop planning. He would carefully select the best place for his fruitful empire to grow on its own. He would faithfully return to his special nurseries to mend fencing and take care of the weeds. His orchards garnered him his moniker of Appleseed Man, and then later, simply Johnny Appleseed. In 1842, the expert botanist finally made his last trip back to Ohio. He ended his journey as it had begun, at the side of his half-brother Nathaniel at his home. Despite a lifetime of seasoned resilience, he succumbed to pneumonia at the age of 71, in 1845. No one knows exactly where he was buried, but there are many memorial sites immortalizing his efforts of planting and spreading seeds, of hope, selflessness, and a purpose that would continue to grow far into the future.